Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this. I feel like I have to angle my body like this, kind of, in comparison. If I go straight forward, I'm, like, not quite angled correctly. But yet, I don't know. I don't know. Also, you're going to see tiny bugs flitting around. I have a tiny little bug issue right now because it has been warm. It has been very humid. There is a forest outside of my house, just outside my window. My window is open 24-7, so I have a constant influx of life in through the window. So I constantly have spiders crawling up everywhere. You know, there's little tiny things that come flying in. I have bees that come, hey, what's up, and then fly out. I gotta keep it open for ventilation, number one. I have to have moving fresh air, I just feel terrible. And number two, the cat needs to get in and out. And number three, especially in the summer, it gets hot in this room right here. It's radiant heating and the kitchen is downstairs. So you do any cooking and radiation and then the heating, it gets warm in here. So I keep the window open. I got a box fan in the window, so thumbs up. On the Shelton, Washington weather and plague rat report, the weather has continued to be overcast, largely overcast most of the time, breaks for sunlight every once in a while, but it's been hot and humid. Gray, not a lot of sun. Uh, thumbs up for that. I mean, life is life. It's not bad yet. Yet. I'm hoping it's not going to get terrible. Last summer was very mild for this area and the rest of the world is actually very in comparison to it was very very pleasant last summer so I don't know how pleasant it's going to be yay thumbs up for that but, oh excuse me all that bloody carbon dioxide from drinking carbonated beverages. I did write a couple things down just as mild stuff to make sure I don't forget because I have short-term memory issues. You know, it's a couple things, including, of course, cannabis use does not necessarily help with short-term memory. <laughs> it helps with chronic pain. It's the only reason I could do this. Literally, without cannabis, I would be either in a wheelchair or bedridden. What's going on in my body is that bad. So, thumbs up. But it's good, and I use it, and I can move. It hurts, and I gotta crack my knuckles because they stick. But, hey, thumbs up for that. A plague rat report there was I went out early ish again last night I think it was around seven or eight ish and oh it wasn't that early if it was eight o'clock was it I can't remember the exact time I went out walkies but I just went walkies I didn't stop in in any stores I didn't get any close to any too close to any buildings but while I was out walking that one bar there's people inside and so yay I mean People need to work. We live in a capitalist society and, you know, we're all crushed under the thumb. So you have to do what you have to do to survive. Yeah. <laughs> but past that, it was just, it was a nice walk. A nice walk out there in the sun. You know, late sun. And then it was dark when I got back. So I guess it was pretty late. Huh. At least I went out. I need to start making the trip up to Walmart again. You know, when this all started, I curtailed my my travels too far because of the whole social isolation, well, social distancing, self-isolation sort of thing. But I got to keep my body moving. I got to keep things going. So I got to keep walking. And I'm at the point now where I make the full loop up into southern Shelton. And then I go in down into downtown, and then I have a big walk there, and then I come back up. So it's time to start walking. I'm not going to go into Walmart. Oh, hell no. But I'm at least going to go walk up to the place and then back. Yay! And that'll be good. <laughs> Hopefully, anyway. I had thought. You see, we had this one place 
that has been an empty like bar slash brewery place for ages and ages and ages. It's been getting cleaned up and worked on. I thought it was just a new people that were moving their bar over, not moving their bar, opening up a bar in town. We have this one building where there has been a, a restaurant and it's been a fairly nice restaurant. It's a really nice building. It looks nice inside and there's been park benches, not park benches, picnic tables outside that you could eat on the sidewalk on the, on the picnic, picnic table, not bench. Well, just as this other place seemed about ready to open up, this all happened and it, it, it's been shut doors. But then I was out walking and this one place that had been there that I was talking about just now, it's empty and I'm going, oh no, did they have to close down because of all this? No, they moved from that place to the new place just in time for the pandemic. <laughs> so, oh, that's good timing. But best of luck on them. I mean, it's a small business. It's not a chain. So here's hoping that they can actually survive. We have so many empty storefronts in Shelton, Washington, even before all this started. So, yay. And then, of course, my computer. Because this is a thing. This past month-ish, month, month and a half, there are times where it's like once a week, I'll boot up my computer and then it'll just lock up. No warning, just meh. So in the first five minutes or so, it's kind of rough, never knowing if it's gonna lock up or not. Usually it just locks up and then I turn it off, turn it back on. But of course lately now, it's when I turn it off, when I come back, it'll blue screen or freeze on the welcome screen or freeze during the power on self test. But then it boots up, third time the charm. I was over a half hour working on the bloody thing this morning. One of Windows 10's favorite tricks for me on my system when I'm booting it up is the Windows Explorer crashes. So it's loading stuff up and then the taskbar loads up and then the taskbar goes away and then the taskbar comes back and then goes away and then when it does come back the stuff down in the notification area is taking forever to come in and so I was just going you know this is going to take forever it's been forever I just went to sign out normally it's got to turn off a lot of programs to sign out this time it just went instantly whap gone there was nothing to turn off because it hadn't turned anything on two minutes of sitting there fighting with itself and having everything crashing and it hadn't loaded up a bloody thing so half hour into it of course it doesn't lock up but it just gets to the point that nothing is working right so it's just jesus god shut everything down turn it off turn it back on it's been working fine since then and I run, <clears throat> you know, spy bot search and destroy, and I've got malware bytes, the free one. But if you run it, it does fine. It's just, you know, it doesn't, if you don't pay for it, it doesn't sit there and be proactive. It's just reactive on the free version. But I run that, and my system's as fine as it can be. Nothing is detected. So I don't know if it's hardware or what. So yay. But once it's up and running, it's up and running. That's a good thing. And then, of course, just to be on the safe side, I do a lot of sitting. I do a lot of sitting, and I'm still really freaked out by this one chummy emu, chubby emu video where this guy... Now, he set himself up to die because he did a lot of stupid stuff. He sat in a chair for up to 72 hours. He did not get up. He sat there for 72 hours. He did not eat. He did not drink. He did not get up to go to the bathroom. He sat for 72 hours. At the end of that 72 period, 72 hour period, he got up and started to walk, then collapsed, hit the ground. Unfortunately, it was a half hour before people got to him, but the blood clots that had accumulated in his legs came out, went up, blocked off of into his lungs, and when you block off the blood flow to the lungs, 
your heart is right there because one of the first things that happens, the first place that blood glow goes when your heart beats is it pushes it up into your lungs and then it comes back to your heart and then goes out to the rest of the body. If it can't make it into the lungs, it's stuck in your heart and it's trying to beat to get the blood to go through, but it's backing up and it bulges and oh, it's bad. This is why a pulmonary embolism is usually so fatal so quickly. He died. But the thing is, sitting for any great length of time, you need to get up and go to the bathroom and drink. He got dehydrated, made his blood thicker. Not good. Thicker blood will tends to get stuck in turbulence points and pool and clot. He just sat that long without moving. Now when you sit, you're compressing your blood vessels. Turbulence, pooling. So once an hour you need to get up. It doesn't have to be long. Just get up, bounce on your toes, you know, get up onto your tips of your toes and move around. Just take a minute and then sit back down. Make sure you drink. Stay hydrated so that your blood doesn't get thicker. So these are all important things that will help keep you safe. When you are sitting, try not to keep your legs bent at less than a 90 degree angle. Don't get that constriction in the blood vessels at the bend of your knees. So you got all these things. Drink, get up once an hour and move, and move your legs as you're sitting here. Don't just keep them in one position. You have valves in your blood vessels in your legs because our hearts, as powerful as they are, are not strong enough to pump the blood all the way through our bodies. So what helps is we have valves in the blood vessels of our legs. And by using your muscles, that squishes the blood up and through back to your heart. So move your toes because the muscles for your toes are not in your toes. The muscles for your toes are not in your feet. The muscles for your toes are up near your knees. They are in your calves. So you wiggle your toes and you're moving all those muscles from your knees on down, squishing the blood back up into your body. And if you can get the muscles of your upper legs going, that's even better. So yeah, once an hour, get up and do something. I don't do it as much as I should. I stay very hydrated. I drink two two liter bottles of some kind of fluid every single day. So I do my best to stay hydrated, which means I got to get up and go to the bathroom a lot, which means I'm not just sitting. So, but especially in the heat, if you have heat, oy vey, drink, don't just compress your blood vessels and yeah, stay active as best you can, as best you can, not saying get up and go run around the block. You know, you got to do just what you can at your physical level. Now I have therapy today, so there's not going to be a lot of really fancy edits and it's, I see I'm at 13 minutes and some odd change, but I have got, I talked a little bit about what I think my story is going to be with, with the bone hurting juice story. The fourth member of the party is going to be one of the clergy of the Church of Seder because Everyone lives in this world, so they know about the Church of Seder. They know about our Lord Seder. They know about all this and that. Scarbet has seen and been around someone else's, had holy visions. And so he knows when there's a real one. There's a clergy type one. You know, they have priests that go out there, active priests. They fight, they adventure, they do stuff. There's one of these people that they're around when he has that vision. It's my Lord Seder speaks to me in visions. Now, does Seder really care about these people individually? No. These are, when these people get visions, it's just information from one of the Sugo sending information to a Seder a C, and these people that are more attuned to it just, you know, it's like the bleed off from 
transmission wires. They can feel it, they hear it, they go, oh! So it's not really for them, but they take it as, our Lord Seder is speaking to me. And so these adventurer types of the bone hurting juice are offered to come on. When there is a vision and all that, when a divine impression, there is, and it leaves an impression on the background, and they can come in and see things, and they can do such with these fine-tuned priests. These three people of the bone herding Jew story, they are part of the impression of what happened. They are part of the story, but it's such that if they don't want to be involved, it's not going to change the whole picture. So the church is going to do something and is offering them to come along because they are part of the picture. But it will not hurt the overall picture if they decide not to be involved. And they decide to get involved. And hey, I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people. It is 15, it's 16 minutes into this. So my usual spiel, um, I'm going to go through and thank up to 25 people. I'm quite sure I'm going to mispronounce the username. I'm very sorry. And uh, it's a 20 to 25 because oy vey my memory. So we have LAG, thumbs up and thank you. Brutal, thank you very, very much. Carol Lemongrab, good to see you in the comments. Thank you very much. Ordinary twat, well, it's good to be an ordinary one, I guess. And then we have Confused Owl 29, thumbs up and thank you. Uh, Marco Vinicus, maybe? There's a, is, every vowel has been replaced by digits, so. But thank you much. And then we have Sean Kahula hands. I sure hope I'm close. Thank you very much. Samus Williams, greatly appreciated. Nathan Cake. I sure hope I'm close. Lazard Lol. Again, I hope I'm close. Thank you very much. Okay, shit. <laughs> thumbs up and thank you. Sue Ozalik. Thumbs up. We have Philippe Sanchez. Oh, greatly appreciated. Brandon Martin. Thumbs up and thank you. If uh, Ollie B. Greatly appreciated. Uh, Aaron S. Thumbs up and thank you. Russian Timing. Good to see you in the comments. Zombie Wolf. Thumbs up and thank you. Crisco. Greatly appreciated. We have Haishi Alaya. Thumbs up. There is Kiwi Crossing. Greatly appreciated. Epic Retard. How about that? Samuel Anderson. Greatly appreciated. Tyler. Thumbs up and thank you. And last but not least, we have Swedish Cookie Monster. Ugh, bloody YouTube studio with the way it scrolls and then doesn't and then suddenly scrolls after you've decided it's not going to scroll, is it? So you give up and then suddenly it goes whoop. Thumbs up. But thank you all, each and every one of you, for having left a comment. It is greatly appreciated. Definitely a thumbs up. And if you could check out my various links down below, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. If you want to help me out but you didn't want to send money to one of those two places, I have a PayPal link down below if you can check that out. And if you didn't want to send money, I have an Amazon wish list link as well. That would be very cool. And I don't feel obligated. I don't feel entitled. And if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. Very, very cool. If you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get for my existence. Definitely a thumbs up. And of course, if you could subscribe to the channel and... <coughs> hit that bell. That would be very cool. Greatly appreciated. I would understand if you did not wish to, but if you are down with it, I will do my best to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of time. Definitely a thumbs up. So yeah, I've got uh, therapy today, so which means I'm going to be in a rush, and that always throws me off because I'm emotionally done afterward but i still got to record and edit something for today so we'll see how this all goes yay <laughs> and it's very very warm and oh it's going to be a wonderful day so be safe be careful if you go out protesting be very very careful protest definitely good so you take care have a great day today I will see you on the flip side, my friend, and that is a very good thing, definitely. So be safe. Be safe, please.